What's up guys, back with another Twin Motion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I created this rendering using Twin Motion. Let's get right into the video. All right, so let's get straight to it. As you can see, I already have my rendering uh, laid out. I called it Automotive Render. You can go to the three dots here. I actually clicked on my image, but you can go to the three dots here and you can rename it, delete it, and so forth. So I called it automotive render. Now, before we get started, I just wanna put out there that this is not the automotive rendering template that Twinmotion does provide, which um, I think it would be a good idea to utilize it. I just wanted to try something a little different and I wanna see what I was able to come up with. So right now we have a BMW 4 M4 and I actually did change the color. So if we go to my um, material picker and click on that, and I used a dark red color. I just wanted to kind of match these panels off my facade here. Guys, don't forget to like that button for me, hit that notification bell, and also subscribe. And don't forget to check out renderreboot.com. This uh, 3D scene is on my website at renderreboot.com so guys don't forget to check that out for me let me know what you think all right so for our car paint color we chose dark red so if you want to change that you can go to materials and you can go to car paint here and twin motion offers um, numerous different colors uh, some custom colors here if you want to check this one out i thought that was pretty cool you can change the tint of it as well so we can change that and we also can change the color intensity under chameleon here and has different endless options that you can use to your discretion to try to get um, the color that you're looking for for your for your car paint so I think that's very useful. We're gonna stick to the dark red. And I was trying to stick to the dark red just to match my panels on my building. But choose whatever color fits best for you. All right, so now that we have everything set up, we are going to use the half tracer and there's a little bit of workflow that I just kind of want to show you guys here in part one. I will create a part two showing how I ended up with the final rendering. And as you can see, I did use ChatGBT, so um, stick around for part two. And so you can see the prompt that I used and how I got the results that I was able to get with this rendering. I, th I think it came out pretty well. Uh, let me know in the comments. All right. So now that we have that, let's start to look at our settings here. So if we go to our environment, I'm going to start rendering this. And as you can see, I do have some lighting already set up and we did use the weather tool to uh, draw some rain coming down so you can kind of see the rain the animation and we can stop that if we like but it's fun all right so let's go to hdri we're going to stick it here we're going to keep it there and then we keep sky dome so here in our preview we are going to change our hdri so we're going to look let's go to the library and see what options we have so we have clear and we have noon skies i want to go to the actual hdri environments tab and let's just see which one i use i believe it was an outdoor All right, let's see which see if we can find it. You can definitely use HDRIs that you probably downloaded from another website, which is pretty good if you want a higher quality HDRI. Just all depends on the quality that you're looking for as well. 
So this is an alphabetical order. Let's see if I can find the one I'm looking for. Here we are. So I, I chose this guy here. So we're just gonna select it and we're gonna drag it onto our viewport. And it's doing its thing, it's loading right now. All right, so as you can see, it changed my background and this is the original HDRI that I used to get the final results. So, all right, let's see what else we can do. So we have our intensity. I actually want to increase that to 1.30 just to brighten up our scene a little bit. And the rotation of our HDRI is at 90 degrees. So for this particular rendering, I set it at 254. All right, so I don't think we could tell a big difference on any changes there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to activate our rendering just so we can see uh, what's happening with our rendering as we make these adjustments. So if I hit render, path tracer, and as you can see, we have some decent results and the quality is just set at medium. Okay. So right now you can see what medium gives us. It gives us a sample per pixel at 64 and our max bounces are at eight. And we have our emissive materials checked, denoiser checked and our fireflies at its max. So this is just your typical 14. Uh, this is your typical samples per pixel at a medium uh, medium quality so that looks good let's make some more uh, adjustments so now let's see if we can see what's going on okay we'll leave directional light and match HDRI let's click under our details here okay that's fine let's go to camera all right, so here in our exposure, we have our auto exposure checked. And if you take off your auto audio exposure, it does give, a, give us more control. We can actually um, make those adjustments, but I always leave it on. And then I start to tweak it a little bit, just kind of see uh, what kind of results I can get. And I'm gonna do 0 0.80. And my white balance we have at 6,900. Let's change that to 4,900. So the 4,900 gave us a more of a cool effect rather than a warm effect. So, all right, so right here we have our tint option. And I actually made some adjustments to that. I wanna say I picked a negative. 0.12 okay so as you can see that gave us a slightly different different uh, tint and we're gonna make some adjustments in our local exposure so right now we have it enabled and we're gonna keep it keep it enabled and we're gonna go to our highlights and let's make that 0 0.35 our shadows Make that 1.00 and it brought out the detail in in our drawings here in our sorry in our rendering and let's see what else okay so right now we have our focal length at 18 let's uh, move that up to 22 so I just want to get up closer okay so now we go in our details and now we have our vignetting. So let's make some adjustments to our vignetting. Vignetting, I want this to be darker. So I'm gonna do 85%. Because I really want to highlight the vehicle itself. I wanna bring more attention uh, to the car that's in the center. So when you use vignetting, it's darkening the corners and actually kind of honing in on our subject, which is the BMW. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna check mark our parallelism. 
and we're gonna do something a little different. So we're gonna click on our depth of field. We're gonna click enable, and we're gonna pick our focus. So I'm gonna pick the BMW here, okay? And we'll leave our parcher and our bokeh shape at this uh, default setting. We're gonna click on our film back. Now, before I click on film back, I would like to go to our rendering and actually increase our samples per pixel. All right, let's go to rendering here. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me and hit that notification bell. All right, so we're gonna do 2048 and my max bounce, we're going to do 15. I'm gonna leave the missile materials checked, the denoiser checked, and the fireflies at 14. Guys, also don't forget to check out um, my website, renderreboot.com. You can actually access this 3D scene at on my website. So check it out. Let me know what you think. All right, so now that we have that, let's go to our FX. And let's make some adjustments here. So in our contrast, let's see if we go to get 45%. Our saturation, well, we'll keep it at 50%. Our clarity, 65%. I want to increase my sharpness here. So I'm gonna increase it to about 20. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna go to loot. And we have our we haven't set the standard, so I did add add a filter on this. So I look up table, go to the lookup table here, and beauty three. All right, so as you can see, that that um, made adjustment there. Actually, made this side of the car um, have more light, which I I really like that effect. All right, so now that we have that we're going to increase our intensity here. So right now we have 50%. I'm going to crank it all the way up to 100%. All right, so now that we did that, we're gonna go back to our, I believe we were at our camera setting, just making some more adjustments here. So instead of the output size being at 2K, I wanna increase it to 8K. I wanna max it out and go to my details. And we're gonna hit tile rendering because if you ever export your your rendering out, it's gonna give you a notification that you need to actually check mark tile rendering when you're doing higher resolution exports. All right, so now that we have that, I think that is turning out pretty well. And guys, don't forget in part two, I'm going to show you the exact prompt that I use on chat GBT to get the final results that I use in this particular rendering. So let's go back to camera and so we're going to go to film back here, back to what we were at and I did, um, change this preset here let me see I actually kept it at 16.9 DSLR so we'll keep it there all right so guys this is um, this is the end of part one so don't forget to check this out and uh, we'll be going into part two Guys, let me know if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And we'll be back with another one.